if okay. I can, but that's the furniture company. Thank you. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Mr. President, I mean, Mr. Clark, please call. Alderman Bosley, Alderman Orman. President. Alderman Moore, Vice Chairman Vaccaro. President. Alderman Cohn. Present. Alderman Carter. Alderman Ties. Chairman Conway. Present. President Reed. Five present, we have a quorum. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Um, we will uh, recognize the director of the airport, Rhonda Hamm. Newbridge. Yeah. Hello. Good. Yeah, very good. And we're going to do board bill number 148 first. No, those are not my keys. They must be Lewis's keys. <laughs> oh, Rob. The, uh, the airport is requesting a Board of Aldermen approval for an authorization ordinance for agreement and contract of sale between the City of St. Louis and North Park Partners, LLC. The airport will sell 6.475 acres to North Park Partners in return for $225,000. North Park Partners sells approximately one-third of an acre to the airport for $17,700. And the airport is granting North Park Partners a non-exclusive easement over approximately six acres to the airport in return for an initial easement fee of $10,000 annually. We respectfully request your approval of this authorization ordinance. Okay. Alderman Cohen, there was a map, if you'd like. Alderman, oh, there's a map. Thank you. Oh. Rob, if you would just briefly point. So if you take a look, uh, the second page is a, is a more enhanced map of the areas that we're talking about. The first page is sort of phase one, phase two of the uh, overall North Park project. But if you take a look at this little section here, this is the piece that the we are... Piece. The, I'm sorry, yes, the green piece is what we are buying back, and that's because it's in the runway protection zone, and so we're getting that back to make sure that it's within our complete zone. The piece on the, the white piece is where we're granting an easement to, uh, which will uh, be an opportunity for them, for them to do grading to get into their properties. The yellow piece is actually the parcel that we are selling to North Park. And uh, why are we selling that now and we didn't sell it previously. Well, if you take a look at the overall development of North Park, they really bought this bulk years ago uh, and did it without having too much of a finalized detailed plan for, for division for phase two. So phase one is now complete and they're in the process of developing phase one. With that, this is kind of a, a key piece of six or seven acres that sits where they would like to just make it nice and squared off. So the the white piece, which would be the easement, would allow them to do grading. If you look at that today, that area needs to be graded. And then this piece would basically be their road access that, that goes into their whole phase two development. And it would have the ability then right here off of the interstate to get into their property. All right. Alderman Norton, do you have any questions? No. Alderman Vicaro. So they're, the little green part, Right. they're selling to us for how much? Uh, $17,700. And then the bigger yellow part, we're selling to them for how much? For $225,000. These are all subject to appraisals and fair market value. And we are having a second review of the appraisals done as well. And do you have the appraisals here that we see them? Uh, do we have the appraisals with us? Probably not. No, but, but they're certified appraisals comply with all the FAA requirements. Those appraisals will be submitted along with uh, the copy of this agreement to the mm -hmm. FAA that they have to sign off on. It's just traditional. I know, but it'd be nice if we saw that. What? The appraisals. We can provide them. You know, I so, so you to, I'll get them to you. Before. So you want to wait to vote on this one? Uh, they're, they're in, they have to get this one done. We were at the airport commission, the president and I, uh, and when this was. So discussed. you saw the appraisal? We never. We didn't Nobody see asked for it. Yeah. Yeah, Nobody yeah, asked for it. Ask I mean, we would have provided it. Yeah. We, no, we've not been asked in the past for appraisal, no. so it wasn't what we thought to do. But it just seems like, I mean, what we're paying and what we're selling and getting. You know, I'm just looking at the size. Well, we're only selling 6.7 acres. It's 225,000. 
we're buying back almost a half an acre and it's only 17,000. So if you look at the proportion of it. I mean, that's my, you know, in the future I'd like to see Okay, that. fair enough. Okay, uh, Alderman Cohn. I'm just curious. So with the uh, the runway protection zone, mm -hmm. where is the runway in relation well, to this? Well, the runway protection <laughs> zone, and Jerry can probably explain this better, but see this black line? Right. That is our runway protection zone. But this there is no runway attached. No, yeah. but There's a <laughs> runway on the other side of Interstate 170, if I may. But we're like selling all the property around the runway protection no. zone? It's, you can't. It's, it's, it's runway 30 right protection zone. It extends out in this shape, and you're seeing the very edge of that shape in what we are intending to lease at the New York PD. So we're not so this selling is, any of the protection This zone. is east of the, the runway. runway. Yes. 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 Okay. It's east of 170. It, it's east of Hamley Road. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <clears throat> All right, Mr. President, any questions? Okay, I would move that uh, we pass board bill number 148 Second. out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Bosley, Alderman Moore. Aye. Alderman Moore, Vice Chairman Vaccaro. Aye. Alderman Cohn. Aye. Alderman Carter, Alderman Matthias, Chairman Conway. Aye. President Reed. Aye. Five aye, vote, zero no vote. Board bill 148 comes out with a due pass recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, we're going to do board bill 140. And this will be for the Port Authority. Thank you. <coughs> if I need, if I need something else, can we get some more call back? Okay. Okay, pass, pass those out if I feel like it's one sheet. <coughs> Got one now. You got now. We got it. Okay, good. <coughs> I'm Nick Deco, City of St. Louis Port Authority. Uh, Board Bill 140 is a uh, request by American Commercial Line uh, to renew a lease agreement for 25 years uh, at this location that you see on your chart there, south of the yard, at the foot of Rutger Street. It's two locations. ACL has been operating there for a number of years, and they'd like to renew their lease for 25 years. I have David Evans. He's the terminal manager of ACL with us here. Uh, they've been in operations. They have this location and one, another location up north and another one down south that they lease from the, uh, the city. Uh, this lease will be, as I mentioned, 25 years. There's 576 linear feet where they moor barges at the area off of uh, Rutger, and then, <coughs> excuse me, down by Lafayette Street, they have 1,010 uh, feet linear feet there. And they uh, moor a bunch of barges that come in and out of the port at these locations. Do you have any questions? All right. I think job. he gets to do that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's okay. The, uh, well, you just let me know you're finished. Um, Th this rate is that the standard rate? Yes, it is. We just increased the rate this year. Okay. Uh, Seventeen dollars and uh, seventeen six two five per linear foot per year. And uh, what percent of an increase is that, or about? Roughly? It's twenty five percent of the base rate. It went up. We had a meeting, if you recall, uh, last year, which we were required to do by ordinance to raise our rate. We had a few of the folks uh, present indicating they thought it was uh, too much of an uh, increase, but we thought it wasn't, and it was passed by the Board of Aldermen. And when we say $17.62 a linear foot, is that the annual rent? Yes. So it's yes, 560 it feet times that? Yes, it is. So it's... In, in this particular location here, the, uh, uh, we'll be paying 62000 It's in the, in the ordinance there, 62000 I believe it is. Over the period of the lease or annually? Per year. Okay. Right. That's fine. I just want to make sure I got that number out. Mm -hmm. And are there any um, capital improvements on the shore? Um, and I know you said ACL's here, but I assume they're they're operating a business. They hire city 
residents, they pay earnings, taxes? Yes, they do. Oh. <coughs> they, um, this particular lease, I just had to look at, is 56000 uh, The one down south is 62000 they pay, and the one up north is 81000 okay. but they pay on their lease. All right. Um, thank you. Alderman Orton. This is the renewal of the 25 years, right? And then yes. it comes up again every five years? No. <coughs> it's, it's 25 years. The price is adjusted every five years. With 10 years with uh, three five-year options okay. is how the release is written. Okay. Right. Keep me straight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's all. Okay, so it's a 10 years, and then they have three five-year options. Uh, yes. That. Right. Yes, sir. Okay. And the extension prices are at a higher rate? Or then determine rate or at this every rate. five years we go through this process of increasing. Right, so rate. it would be at the increase rate. Oh yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. This in the in the uh, appendix to our leases, it states in there that we may be doing that every five years, and we got to go through our process to, for a, a, approval of the board of aldermen to increase our rates. Well, thank you, um, Alderman Vicaro. What do they do there? They have, uh, David might be able to answer that better than me, but I think what they do is a bunch of barges come in and they, they take, you know, there might be 30 barges coming up from down south and they'll take uh, maybe 10 here, another five over here or something like that and take them out and move them if they're going to their docks in the city or if they're heading further north. They'll take the, you know, and take them up to the uh, lock and dam system to wherever the barges are going to go. So the, are these rates would be the same? I mean, th they're not out on a competitive bid then, so that where they're bidding these, would g like other companies that may want to do this, they go out on a competitive bid, or is this a set rate no matter who does it? It's a set rate for all our leases. Okay. Okay. I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Okay, all the info. I, I guess piggybacking off of uh, Alderman Vaquero's questions. So it's a set rate. I'm just curious because you know the airport constantly gets thrown into the spotlight with its landing fees and all of that fun stuff. Like where are we in terms of other cities with regard to the rates that we charge? We're in uh, pretty good shape. Uh, what you have to look at when you talk about other cities and locations is when you're in a lock and dam system, the river doesn't rise as rapidly it does in St. Louis here because we're just south, five miles south of the last lock on the upper mess. Mm -hmm. And they can, can control the height of the river most of the time. Here we got a 50 foot rise and fall. So we got that situation that whoever leases from us have to deal with. The other situation that you have in our area here is the Missouri River confluence is 15 miles north of us. Mm -hmm. And we've got a lot of silt that comes down which costs dredging, added cost to the, the folks that use docks in our area, but they do it. So if they got enough area in a particular area where they have to moor their barges, they may need to do some dredging periodically. Um, <coughs> David, would you mind if David would answer the question about what they're doing there? Yeah, I mean, uh, basically all the leases that we have are for staging and mooring barges. Uh, I run a coal facility, which is in uh, North St. Louis, right at the edge there. And thus far, since 79, we've moved 200 million tons of coal through there. Well, these other leasing areas, because there's no big areas to make up tows to, to leave town, these leasing areas are used not only for the coal dock, but also for other areas where they might be bringing grain off the Illinois or another dock in the St. Louis area where they might be loading grain. Uh, and what you do is you make up your toes large enough so that you can take them down in one big big unit rather than single barges and that's what they're used for the staging areas to build toes to go up and down the Illinois water system. My family was in the tugboat and barge business. So I that's great. <laughs> I'm more like but where are we in terms of like other ports on the mm -hmm. Mississippi? Like we're where are our rates with, uh, a lot of other places um, have boring fees for as I understand it. Mm -hmm. Like ahead meaning we're more expensive. We're more expensive. Okay. Yes. Okay. I appreciate it. Thank you. Alderman Vicaro. Just a follow up. Actually, every year for six years I've sat on this, 
And every year they keep saying, well, they're going to take the transportation. We're going to go on a tour by boat or whatever to see that. This is, and you know, because every year, because we keep saying we don't know enough about mm -hmm. this to make intelligent decisions. And every year they keep saying we're going to do this. Is that I'm ever going to come around? Are we ever I'm glad do you it? said that because we used to do that more often. Yeah. <clears throat> now we need to do that. I think it's great to, on our cruise boats we have down in front of the arch, to get a group together, especially invite all the aldermen that would like to come and do, do a cruise up and down the river uh, you know, and show you from the river side what's going on. It's a very busy river. Why don't let's not call it a cruise. All right. Well, let's, <laughs> let's see if. Um, you know, two to three weeks from now on a Friday at like 11.30. And uh, I will, you know, we've done it at the airport just because we do a lot more bills for the airport. And we've mm -hmm. already been out the airport. And I think it was really informative. So I would appreciate that maybe a Friday three weeks from now, yeah, you know, okay. before well, it gets too cold. That. <clears throat> and then I'll, get, I'll make it available idea. to all of the aldermen. You know, you know, probably only seven or eight will show up. Mm -hmm. Maybe 13. If you throw in a lunch, I don't think the airport threw in lunch. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, did, they, we, we did they throw in lunch? Yes, we did. Yeah. Oh, okay. oh, it was a very good lunch. It was a little box lunch. Yeah, sandwich. Sandwich, yeah. Some chips. It was good. <laughs> That's a good idea. We've done but, that in the past, and we haven't done it in a number of years. Well, I know we talk about it every year, and every year we say we're going to do it. I will get that information to the aldermen. <laughs> I would move that we pass board bill number 140 out of committee to do pass recommendations. I'll say previous rules. It's been moved and seconded board bill number 140 come out of committee with a do pass recommendation. There's been a request for previous rule. Seeing no objection, board bill number 140 comes out of committee with a do pass recommendation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you for your patience. Oh, no problem. Good to see you. See you guys. Okay, um, we're going to do the three bills that are all companion bills together. Okay, you didn't want to do 143 first? Oh, you want to do 143 oh, first? It's not to me. I just no, go ahead. I'm, okay. I'm here at your pleasure. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Do you need the same thing? Uh, okay. going, this is Sue Kapinski um, from the airport. I think their official title is like. It's oh, airport deputy director. Okay, I keep saying CFO, but okay, deputy director. But I'll explain that. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Board Bill 143, if approved, uh, authorizes an appropriation of $519,300 from the Airport Development Fund, the ADF. Um, and what this is for specifically is 400000 of this is for a new generator uh, for our airport office building. The airport office building is on the other side of the airport field from the terminals. Uh, we occupy the fourth floor. Uh, for uh, Gary Beckman, Airport Deputy Director, Planning and Development. His whole uh, shop is up there, planning, development, uh, engineering. But then in addition to that, we lease three floors to uh, Trans States Airlines. And then finally, we also lease to Boeing uh, that has a rather large, very expensive simulator. This generator uh, that we're asking for an appropriation for uh, will help keep that building uh, in power when we have problems, which we have had recently. We have a generator there now, but for the most part, it's falling apart. The other $119,300 is to pay um, another fund back uh, passenger facility charges uh, that could not pay for generators that we've already purchased. So the total is $519,300, and I respectfully request your approval of this board bill. Okay. Alderman Orton. No question. Alderman Vaccaro. No question. Alderman Coe. No question. Alderman Tyre. I can't have any questions. I just got here. <laughs> I know. I, this is Board Bill 143, and it's to purchase a, a new backup generator um, at the airport. Okay. No questions to you. <laughs> All right. Um, I would move that we pass board bill number 143 out of committee with second. a two pass recommendation. It's been moved and seconded that board bill number 143 come out of committee with a two pass recommendation. Mr. <laughs> Clerk, please call the roll. Alderman Bosley, Alderman Ortman. Aye. Alderman Moore, Vice Chairman Vaccaro. Aye. Alderman Cohen. Aye. Alderman Carter. Alderman Mackay. Present. Chairman Conway. Aye. 
four aye votes, one present vote. Board Bill 143 comes out with a due press recommendation. Thank you. The uh, next bills are in sequence. So uh, the uh, Deputy Director Kapinski will be talking about three of them simultaneously, but we will go on record in saying uh, we're starting with Board Bill number 144. Oh, okay. No, I'm sorry. Which one are the numbers? One, I'm sorry. That's <laughs> yes, we'll okay. We'll hold 144 and 145 to the side. Oh, the and it'll be 140. We'll, 146. We'll be talking about 146, sure. but it relates to 147 and 148 all together. And we need one for the chair. Oh, oh, he, oh, he has it over there. Okay. Mm -hmm. It could go around that Do you have way. enough? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I thought that this would uh, be helpful. Uh, it was to the airport commission in explaining these board bills. Uh, we're taking board bill 146 first because this, as you look at the little flow chart here, uh, begins the process, if you will. This board bill uh, requests your approval to transfer $2,050,000 from the airport's debt service stabilization fund to the airport development fund. The reason for this is because we had, in the last several months, uh, quite a few uh, fire line ruptures and water main uh, breaks that we are currently looking into and have hired a forensic engineer. However, these are considered operational emergencies that we do not have a budget for. The comptroller of the city has to authorize first, before we can start through the legislative process, any funds from the debt service stabilization fund, which she has and she um, approved at the airport commission as well as EMA. Therefore, now we come to you and ask you if you will please approve this board bill transferring two million fifty thousand dollars to the uh, airport development fund. Do you vote on that first, or should I keep going? No, let's explain the whole process. Okay, the board bill one forty five then goes from. Uh, request your approval to transfer funds $1,078,022 from the ADF to the uh, operations and maintenance budget of the airport. And what this is, the segment that's still all related to these operational emergencies that I explained, but this is funding from our O&M fund for some of the, uh, the cleanup of the areas, uh, demolition, uh, things like that. And then Board Bill 144, on the right side of your flow chart, uh, <coughs> appropriates 971978 from the uh, Airport Development Fund, uh, mainly for the capital purchases associated with, the, um, with these problems, these emergencies. Um, for the most part, it's from the, um, the main thing is, as I just talked about, the airport office building. There was a huge flood over three floors and its restoration costs for our tenant. And then another part was to repair um, a fire line uh, uh, pipe. So that's what all three of these board bills, and that's why I asked the chair if I could talk about them all at one time. Right, and I'm sorry, there's a, one of our members was, was, were gone when you talked about 145. Could you tell me about 145 again? Just give me that sure. description. What that is, is transferring money from the airport development fund to the operation and maintenance budget uh, for the items associated with mainly the cleanup and some of the demolition of the uh, areas that we had problems with. And that's more of an operational a maintenance issue versus a uh, capital buying, you know, equipment and restoring. And this effectively, this ordinance also effectively increases the budget of the, oh, so you're really approving a budget amendment as well. Okay. And the, the fire line ruptures, I'm sorry, I, I guess I don't understand, don't know what actually happened. Okay. Here. Um, Jerry Backman, as I said, is an airport deputy director. He's the head of engineering, and it's probably easier for him to explain than me. Sure. There were multiple ones, too, right. so it wasn't in just one right. location. We had four right. separate ones. Okay, so if you'll tell me what that was, I don't understand what the fire line eruption means. Okay, um, well, there were a couple of events <coughs> at the airport uh, earlier this
this spring that frankly were largely related to aging infrastructure and did result in the fire lines breaking. We had to repair them. We, we had to go in and restore pavements and foundations and so on. Uh, there were also several others starting in about August this year that uh, were the result of the, we believe, of a change in operations from the utility provider that increased our pressure and uh, found some weak spots in older pipes and valves and so on, and they spontaneously ruptured and leaked, and we, we had to fix those as well. All right, I appreciate that. Um, on any question on the three things here, we, we just entertain those at, at one time, but we'll go in order. Um, Alderman Ardman? No question. Alderman Vicaro. So, so they've already been repaired and... They have largely been repaired, pardon me for interrupting, but the, uh, the airport office building uh, is a kind of a longer term repair. Our tenant on floors three, two, and one uh, is operating out of trailers right now out in our parking lot. Uh, we would like to get them restored by the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I mean, the money that we, the money we use to do the repairs, where did that come from? Um, they, um, originally, it came from uh, the operations and maintenance budget, um, the cleanup and all that, and this is paying back the operations and maintenance budget. As far as the actual restoration, uh, that work, uh, we're in the process of bidding that out, and this money will pay. Some of it we had to do right away, so we did temporary ordinances from other funds, and we have to pay it back. And the deficit? Fund. How much service stabilization, stabilization fund, fund right. yes. Okay. How much is in there now? Um, there's approximately $36 million in that fund. Um, we have to have at least um, 630, 29, I think. Yeah, here it is. Um, we also use that fund for the uh, rate mitigation. But um, we are approximately, after this $2 million transfer, if you approve it, we'll be about $6.7 million overfunded in that fund. And that's one of the reasons why the comptroller uh, feels comfortable in uh, allowing this. And it is true operational emergencies. Okay. Do you have a question about how the, the DSSF works, Joe? No, 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 I mean, so the comptroller feels that it's necessary to do this transfer. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, we don't have the current funds. We would just continue to pollute our airport development fund, which is not a good thing. So we don't have the funds. I mean, based on these emergencies that we've had and these ruptures and the damage that they've caused, they were under, they, one, they were obviously not budgeted nor were they planned, and our contingency fund isn't large enough to cover those costs. This is the only way that you can take funds from this um, DSSF, okay? Uh, it's come through the legislative process, the comptroller has to approve it. As you know, we've come before the, um, the TNC and the Board of Aldermen to transfer money from their 13.7 million every year for rate mitigation, but that right. goes right back into I understand, it. Right. It back yeah. in now it's eight and a half million dollars overfunded from what the bond indenture uh, says that we have to have it. Okay, the only reason, because if I remember, I thought the airlines were kind of wanting us to, I, I, I realize it wants to fix the airport, but I, didn't they kind of want us to stabilize our spending out there? Uh, actually, the airlines, uh, ironically, uh, don't like this fund and think that we should be using it, um, in, uh, using this fund for other items as well, um, and we cannot, according to the bond adventure. The airlines want us to be able to spend at least the overfunding of it, and we are not allowed to, according to the bond council. We did bring it forward with the comptroller's approval to put $5 million of the overfunding into the ADF at the request of the airlines this year. That was not approved through bond council. So they said we can't do it. So we had to but drop it, that. But if it's that overfunded, why wouldn't they let you take $5 million? Because they said the bond indenture was not allowed for it. And the only way to change the bond in indenture is to have a vote of the uh, bondholders. Except for emergencies. So right. that's why these instances of these water main breaks and these fire main breaks were all emergencies. So we were allowed to go back through the comptroller and ask for that 
to be uh, to and, be and, and you don't have to run it past the bond and oh bond council oh yeah they know too. emergencies in there right so within the indentures it right. says for operational emergencies you may use it okay then i have no other questions okay I, I said I have no other questions. Oh, I thought you said you had one more. No, question. no, no, I'm sorry. No I'm other questions. I'm okay. sorry. Alderman Cope. <clears throat> Just, I, I appreciate the clarification with Alderman Vicaro's questions. Um, and I'm still stuck on why don't we have just two board bills why do we have the three why don't we just transfer it directly to onm and to adf i'm still confused why we're transferring okay because you have the first you um you know on the first one you transfer it into the airport development fund but just transferring money into that fund doesn't allow you to spend it i have to get your authorization to spend it and that's why the the second one on the right here is the authorization actually. But why spend, don't we do like two bills that authorize spending? I would have to defer to my attorney on that. Well, and, you know, initially we did the draft ordinance of, uh, from to get the funds from the from the DSF into the development fund, and that 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 uh, procedure is really covered by our indenture and our requirements. And the emergency provisions of the for the control. The then the, the issue became was okay. Then we had uh, uh, authorizations that we needed to to uh, spend the money, and we had two different uses of the money. One's uh, a public works ordinance. No, I understand and that. The other one is a budget amendment ordinance. I I suppose a better question is why can't we just directly move things into O and M from DSSF? Because under our bond indenture, you're not authorized. You cannot do that. Okay. Uh, that, I think, answers my question. Thank right. you. I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. understand. I didn't understand it initially, right. too, but that, that's your answer. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All the women fire. No question. All right. I would move that we pass board bill number 146 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. It's been moved in second the bill number 146 come out of committee with a due pass recommendation. I go with previous uh, she was Mr. Clark, please you call the roll. No, I was all, present. All, the one in, uh, all in Conway. Uh, hi. Wait a second, that's the wrong one. Sorry. Well, Walker Pettis is like, okay. Alman Bosley. Alman Orman. Hi. Alman Moore. Vice Chairman Vicaro. Hi. Alman Cohen. Hi. Alman Carter. Alman Tice. Hi. Chairman Conway. Hi. Five, I vote zero, no votes for Bill 146. Comes out with a pass recommendation. I next would move that we pass board bill number 145 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Second. It's Objection. Been, it's been moved and seconded that board bill number 145 come out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Mr. Clerk, please call the roll. Oh, um, yeah, I'm um, in Conway. Uh, we still have the wrong sheet. <laughs> Here's the spill. No, it's just. Alman Bosley, Alman Orman, Alman Moore, Vice Chairman Vaccaro, Alman Cone, Alman Carter, Alman Matthias, no. Chairman Conway, Aye. four I votes, one no vote, board bill 145 comes out with a due pass recommendation. Anything that they Thank you. the public service, I'm not going to vote no on anything they direct. The, the, the next bill, I know there's a companion here, vote vote is board bill number 144. BPS and we are at war now. Mm -hmm. I move that we pass board bill number 144 out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Second. It's been moved and seconded that board bill number 144 come out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Previous um, roll. There's been a request for previous roll, seeing right. no objection. Board bill number 144 comes out of committee with a mm -hmm. due pass recommendation by a vote of four to one. Okay, now we're on board bill 147. <laughs> this board bill, uh, if approved, um, authorizes a public works and improvement program at the airport uh, for fiscal year 2015, um, authorizing an initial appropriation of $13,287,271. This is for 26 projects 
um, that in total the project cost is approximately $30 million. The reason that why we're asking for an appropriation less than $30 million is because we receive federal funds and so the total project cost is $30 million, including those projects that are federally funded. And we need to cash flow it out of the ADF, the Import Development Fund. However, what really comes out of the ADF when it's all said and done is the $13.2 million, which is only the match for the AIP, excuse me, Airport Improvement Funds from the federal government. Um, to summarize real quick, there's 26 projects. Approximately uh, seven, pro there are seven projects where there's a 25% match, and the rest of them uh, we have to pay 100% out of the airport development fund. Uh, there was a process that the airport went through to get to these 25 pro 26 projects that we have to do uh, in this fiscal year. We took them to the airlines, we have to receive a vote of the airlines first, and then we come through the legislative process. I respectfully request your approval of this board bill. And why do we um, have to get the approval of the airline? Because of the airport use agreement that we have with the airlines, any of the funds spent out of over $100,000, we have to receive their approval. And these are all uh, projects over $100,000 or equipment. Because the, the landing fees fund that do we fund the no, this comes out of the Airport Development Fund, which is not supported by landing fees, but it's just part of the use agreement that um, because this, this last time when we negotiated, one time we didn't always need the, the approval, um, but we do now because of them supporting the airport more from airline uh, fees, landing fees, and terminal rental rates. Okay. But they approved all the projects. All right, all the Northern. I do have a couple, but the airlines have to make up any shortages, right? And that's why they have to approve that? No, not on this. Um, if they were emergency projects, I would not need the approval of the airlines. Right. But, but I thought they had to make up shortages. If, if, we, fall the short, year, right. if we are short, yes, they will make up. Yeah, on the, o, on the O&M fund, but this has nothing to do with the O&M fund. Right, and they... They kind of want to start doing that because so then my other question we just put money in the in the adf fund uh the airport development fund just a few minutes ago for for those projects dealing with the um, emergency well, how much emergencies was, but how much was in there i mean because you're saying that these things are like 15 million that we have to come out so it must have been a substantial amount of money well, in there with the with unencumbered balance right now in the ADF is approximately $26 million. When you take out the 13, you know, it's essentially half of that is left. But these are projects that the airport believes after much discussion that we need to do. And also it includes equipment, uh, you know, there's assault and plow trucks, like the icing truck, uh, I'm not, I'm, mower. I'm not arguing that, I just oh, was I'm curious sorry. why we put money in there if there was a substantial amount of money in there. We took money from the... Uh, because DSSF, you know, the, you know, and we put it into the ADF and move some over to the right. ADF uh, Airport Development Fund on this side. The Airport and Development Fund is is going down at a rapidly alarming rate, quite honestly. And if we had to take another two million out of there, remember the airlines do not pay us back for we don't amortize anymore for projects. Okay. This comes out of it, and this is our only form of somewhat discretionary funds. So if we didn't take and ask the comptroller for that $2 million, that would have been another $2 million out of the ADF to get our balance down to about $11 million. And, you know, as you can see, this list here in just one year is $13.5 million. So we're getting to a point where we're getting a little nervous about this. We're, this is one of the top items that we're going to talk to the airlines about in our next use and lease uh, negotiations. So if we don't look at the ADF fund as being substantially funded. I mean, we look mm -hmm. at it quite the opposite. Right. It's, a, it's a dwindling fund. It's our only source right now to match these federal grants that we get. So if we're looking at projects on runway infrastructure or you're looking at anything to be able to keep the airport operable at a safe manner, you know, we have to have an ability to fund those projects. So when you talk about 
you know, there being 10 or $11 million left in that, that's a pretty low amount in our eyes. No, I was just more just curious why we, yeah. you know, because no, it seemed no. like we were saying it was kind of an emergency, so that's why we right. took the money and did what we did with it, and then, you know. That, that money was dedicated, the, the two million that we transferred out of the DSSF goes directly to those projects that were emergency projects. We don't, we can't use that money for, for this. Else. That's why it was so specific and having to be put into the O and M and specifically for the, the capital projects. So that they are identified dollar by dollar on those on the items for the emergency funding. Okay. I, I don't have any other questions. Okay. I'm just curious. That's all. All the move code. So um, Do the, do the airlines view St. Louis as a valuable marketplace? They do, Alderman Cohen. I think that's probably one of the strong points that we have right now, is that even though we do have higher cost of operating here than some of our competitors, the one thing that the airlines see here, and it's why we've been able to continue to grow some of these markets back, is that they see a good, strong yield out of here. And what I mean by yield is the their ability to sell business tickets and get a good yield per ticket is strong. So if we didn't have that, if we didn't have a good business market out of the St. Louis region, uh, it would be a challenge. But because we are such a strong business market, not so much on the leisure market, that gives them a higher yield on tickets. And with that, they look at this market as very successful. I mean, this year we've added a couple more markets. We'll have an announcement Monday on a new market that we're uh, adding. So they continue to look and partner with us and see Yes, we like this, but they also take a very hardcore approach to, we want to know what you're doing. We want to know how you're, how you're cutting costs, but how you're keeping the runways and the airport safe and operable. And we want to know where you're spending your money. And for us, we feel that's a fair trade-off, to sit down and work with them to say, this is what we're looking at doing to buy their support and make sure that we're all on the same page. <coughs> sort of keeps us in sync. So are they supportive of building the ADF? I mean, so we were obliged to keep funds in the DSSF right. because of, okay. you know, well, bond indentures right. and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But with the ADF, you know, to your point, it's more discretionary spending. Right. So are the airlines supportive? Or, I mean, because you're saying that they want us to move funds out of the DSSF. Are they supportive of um, building yeah, uh, up they, the they, ADF? Fund? Yeah, they understand that that's really our only source uh, for capital projects. Um, we received how it's funded uh, in the last in, for these five years of this use agreement is we receive the airport receives six percent of the non aeronautical revenues. So, for example, concessions, parking, uh, we receive six percent of that. That's equating to about two, almost two and a half million dollars per year. Well, two and a half million coming in and thirteen million going out, you know, doesn't add up. What we've been doing uh, this, the funding that we have in there for the most part has been from years ago when the airport was doing quite well mm -hmm. and it's just dwindling now. So um, I guess what happens, uh, you know, I was in high school when we did the runway build out at Lambert. So the bonds and all of that that covered the cost of the highway expansion are currently covered with the DSSF? No, I mean, no, are those paid no. by the, now? Or? The debt, um, well, when you say the expansion, I well, mean, I, when I think of expansion, I think of this last runway that was built. Right. Is that what you're talking? Right. Okay, yeah. There was bonds sold, and that's part of the other reason that we have rather high landing fees is to pay down that debt. Right. So and that's how, what we're doing now. The like, DSSF has nothing to do with. You it. know, when I think of you know budgets and savings 20, 30, and all that. Twenty thirty four is when that's done. Okay, so the good we won't actually be able to like start collecting enough revenue to start saving up again until well, no, 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 not necessarily. Yeah. Okay. Well, the, the good piece is if you look at the if you look at the debt to 2034 which covers all the bonds that we have outstanding. Mm -hmm. The highest debt year that we have is this year. It's fiscal year 15. So it's okay. about 78 million dollars a year that we're paying into that. That starts dropping off going into fiscal year 16. So and every year it yeah, gets lower and lower. So we are at sort of that high point right now. The good piece is we've got some hopefully uh, good years ahead if the economy continues to stay. The other thing that we've talked about is as we go back into the new use and lease agreement, which will start in 
July 1st at 17. 16. 16. I'm sorry, 16. You know, we want to talk to the airlines about taking a larger percentage of the non aeronautical revenues, and instead of 6%, can we make that 10% to put into the airport development fund? We think, based on the partnerships that we have and the collaboration we have with them, that we'll have at least a successful shot at doing that. Mm -hmm. We can't guarantee it, but we do think that we'll have an opportunity based on how we've been working and the progress that they've seen the airport come through, uh, that we'll be able to hopefully get a larger percentage of those non-aeronautical revenues. Okay. And also understand, as Ron has alluded to earlier, the airlines need a good airfield, mm -hmm. okay? And so we have to keep uh, being able to do a, have our match for the federal funds in order to do the rehabbing on Great. that runway, on those runways and taxi. The other piece is it's one of our it's one of our strong points right now in trying to encourage carriers like Southwest to move more connecting traffic to Lambert because of the non congested runway and the great condition of the runways and our opportunity to clear their flights in and out versus so many at Midway. So we've had some success with a couple of those markets like Grand Rapids that they've looked at. We'll have another one coming up, uh, I think, in the spring that they're going to be moving over St. Louis to try to bring some of that connecting traffic. And it really is because of the strength of our runway system. And sorry, Mr. Chair, if you can indulge me for just a moment. The law that prevented Southwest the right from... Limit. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's expiring or has expired. Mm -hmm. How is that potentially going to impact St. Louis and landings that we have right. here? We, we will see uh, two new markets added by Southwest, but we will see a couple flights reduced into the Love Field. So mm -hmm. Love Field is sort of their uh, headquarters right. where the amendment was actually put into place for. So, uh, you know, it, we will probably be one of the less impacted airports. There's others that are stronger impacted than we are. But we will see two new markets that we'll announce here soon uh, that'll be nonstop service, but we'll we'll drop a couple flights into Love Field, which is fine. We have ample service into DFW and okay. Love today. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Alder Blumenthal. No questions. All right. I would move that we pass board bill number 147 on the committee with a due pass recommendation. Second. It's been moved and second that board bill number 147 come out of committee with a due pass recommendation. Previous roll. Mr. Clerk, uh, there's been a request for previous roll. Seeing no objection, <coughs> board bill number 147 comes out of committee. Board bill number 148. No, one, one, nine. Oh, I'm sorry. That's right, we did that on the box. Board Bill number 149. Uh, board Bill 149, we're re respectfully requesting your approval uh, for the dual customs agree agreement between the airport and Brownsville International Air Cargo, BIAC. Uh, we're working with BIAC to establish and begin Mexican government and U.S. government authority and approval for the establishment of a dual customs clearing facility at the airport where U.S. Custom, or U.S. cargo inbound from Mexico can be cleared by U.S. customs and Mexican customs outbound from the airport to Mexico would receive clearance from Mexican customs officials. The term of the dual customs agreement is three years with two one-year mutual options, so a total of five years are possible. As part of the dual customs agreement, St. Louis is granting first rights of refusal on two separate facilities at the airport. The first right of refusal is for cargo building number three in Cargo City. The second right of first refusal is for buildings one, two, and three on the northern track site. Along with these rights of first refusal, we are granting the BIAC the sole rights to perform certain ancillary cargo services and the sole right to perform dual customs facility work at the airport. Um, under the, in return for these rights, BIAC is obligated to pay for and perform all services related to the application process for a dual customs facility. They go through the application process, all the expense, all the travel, and all the plans that have to be generated, and all the meetings are the responsibility of BIAC. Uh, finally, I'll point out that any lease agreement resulting from the approval of the dual customs agreement will need further approvals in, separate, in a separate approval process. And we respectfully request the uh, committee's approval for this authorization ordinance. 
And uh, just one question, huh? how many other airports in this country have the ability to do the customs back and forth like this with Mexico? With cargo today, there is none. There is an approved uh, facility in Laredo, Texas, which is currently for trucking, basically. So there is a, a dual customs cargo clearance in Laredo. The U.S. government and the Mexican uh, government have agreed to do one airport uh, approved facility, and so we're fighting for the rights to get that one up. Thank you. Um, Alderman Orvin. Um, Alderman Bacar. No questions. Alderman Cohn. No questions. Alderwoman Tyus. No questions. Okay. I like this bill. Yes, we do too. <laughs> <laughs> this will generate. And we, and we would be respectfully grateful if we had it passed. <laughs> I would move that we pass for bill number one. Second. The previous one. Pass re recommendation. There's been a request for previous roll. Seeing no objection, board bill number 149 can be recommended with a two-pass recommendation. Board bill number 150. Board bill number 150, we respectfully request the Board of Aldermen approval for seven on-airport passenger vehicle rental concession agreements at the airport. Uh, this was done through a bid process, competitive bid process. There were seven bidders. Uh, and we're uh, requesting approval to award a concession agreement to all seven bidders. Uh, the premises at the airport that we're granting is rental car counters in Terminal 1 and Terminal, and then it, curbside locations for pickup of passengers in Terminal 1 and Terminal 2. Revenue to the airport is minimum annual guarantees ranging from $360,000 a year to oh, just over $2 million a year in the first year mags plus 10% of the gross receipts. We respectfully request the Board of Aldermen's approval of this ordinance. And how much did we currently take in? Um, last year, we uh, the airport netted about just over $11 million. Okay. Is it the same, same, or the same it's seven same companies? Same seven companies, yes. Okay. Are there any questions on board bill number 150, Alderman Vaccaro? Well, Ken's first. But I'm sorry. But <laughs> I made a mistake. It's, it's a lot of rental. That's, no. <laughs> no. Okay. And no, no, no questions. Alderman Picaro. No. Alderman Cohn. Questions. Alderwoman Tyers. Questions. Okay. Um, I would move that board bill number 150 come on a committee with a due pass Second. recommendation. Second. It's been moved and requested that board bill number. It's been moved and seconded. Board bill number 150 come on a with a due pass recommendation. There has been a request for previous roll. Seeing no objection, board bill number 150 comes out of committee with a due pass recommendation. I thank you. There is another committee hearing that uh, please go there directly if you're on that committee. Um, I will keep you posted as to what the Port Authority sets up for us. Okay. Great. Thank you. And, and I think what we did on this time, what we said was, because it was a cost on the board. Mr. Clerk. Maybe we would just do it. I'll, I'm objecting to any of these being on con consent, too. Okay, calendar. Thank you. All right, thank you.